Hello, I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon with my friends from policemag.com. Today's strategy and tactics, we're going to talk about handcuffing, putting our suspects in positions of tactical disadvantage. Advantages for us, tactical disadvantages for the suspect. If there's one thing I've learned by traveling across the country and internationally is that there's 9,000 ways different officers are doing things. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but there's many different avenues to approach it. And uh, we're going to be talking about different strategies because remember, the strategy is the overall view. Taking this suspect, putting him at the handcuffs safely in transportation. The tactics are what we're going to use to do that safely. Before we go any further, I want to introduce you to my partner, Sergeant Jeff Anderson. This is my partner, Sergeant Anderson, AKA also known as number one, all right? Now, as you can tell, we have been together probably 30 years training in combatives in martial arts and law enforcement. We are like the dog owners that the animals start to look the same as the owner. I mean, really. Okay. I see what I'm saying? I mean, that's how, <laughs> we've been, how long we've been together. But anyway, now uh, Sergeant Anderson's a full-time trainer at an academy, so we don't, I don't get him to tra he travel with me as much as we used to. So when I got him, I grab onto him as much as I can. Today we're going to be doing the, the different tactics and strategies used for handcuffing. As you've seen, there are 9,000 different ways guys are using it. Absolutely. However, I think a lot of the problems that we see, if, if an officer does a tactic the same way over and over and over again, he develops that neurological program as we discussed in previous programs. That neurological program, and if it never goes wrong for him, he develops a more higher confident level that it's a proficient technique. Correct. Guys, good luck is not good tactics, and never mistake the two. And many times what we're doing, well, I've used it for 20 years. Yeah, but has it ever been tested? Has anybody ever tested you? Have you ever really evaluated or looked at it? What we're gonna talk about today is almost looking at the counter capabilities of our suspect when we put them in positions of disadvantage. Now, as you know, if it's too complex, the officers are, are not going to do it. And then we lose our sharpness and become complacent and do things that are completely unsafe, putting hands on cars and handcuffing them, things of that nature. So we're just going to talk about some of the strategies and tactics. So let's talk about, one, putting a suspect in a tactical disadvantage. Okay, how about the old standard up against the wall position? Jeff? Okay. Put your hands up against the wall. All right. This position here, feet back, spread them. All right. This here still, guys, I still see it all the time, offers you no tactical advantage whatsoever. Understand the principles here. First of all, his mass is attached to greater mass, all right? Therefore, he can catapult off of this much more powerful than he could from a stationary or standing position. So this officer is no tactical disadvantage for handcuffing or searching. It is a position of cover. So if I want to cover him while I'm waiting for a backup or I'm trying to figure out what's going on, I might say, put your hands up against the wall higher than that. Keep him there, stay right there, all right? Now from here, I can cover him very efficiently, all right? And I don't need his hands, put your hands out in a T configuration, Jeff, all right, here. That's perfectly fine too, but why expand my vision? Why expand my target zone? Because if there's two suspects now and they're doing that, I have to use twice the amount to cover. For example, if you can follow me for a minute, if I was a second suspect and we do this, look how much area one officer has to use to cover. That's a lot of area to cover. Comparatively to using more of an erect posture. Put your hands up against the wall, higher than that. Stay right there. Chest against the wall, like that. All right, now you could have a second suspect still here too. And then you could actually have a third suspect. Those are positions of cover. Don't move, stay right there. Give me some more units here, I got three in custody. You can stay there, you have visual, your visual cone is more narrowed, you don't have to keep scanning for threats, position of comfort. However, when it's time to handcuff him, he comes off that mass, all right? So here, understands the advantages, position of cover, not a position of handcuffing. If I, to, if I go to try to search him, all right, no matter, excuse my back, no matter what I do, if I come here, put your hands up against the wall, and I do any of this stuff here, I don't care where you put your position, you are at a tactile disadvantage. Just fire that off, go, boom. He can come up with that elbow faster than I can certainly cover it. If I drop down here, he gets boom, hook it, or drop down to my spot, bam. There's just too many, too many counters, 
all right? So if we're going to handcuff him from that position, we do it this way, all right? Up against the wall, all right? Now I realize I'm gonna go into a position of handcuffing. All right, do me a favor, take your hands off the wall, hands behind your back, thumbs in the air, all right? Get your hands off your back for me. Spread your feet for me, wider than that. Now, shoulders back towards the sound of my voice, all right? Freeze for a second. Now I'm gonna give you a side angle, okay? Now I want your shoulders back towards the sound of my voice. You see how his mass is displaced, all right? Anytime these shoulders go behind the hips, the weight transfer is all on his heels. He cannot do any counter to me whatsoever until he becomes erect here and then spins to counter. Do you agree with that, John? Absolutely. All right, so here, put your hands on your back, thumbs in the air, all right? Shoulders back to the sound of my voice. Now, this is our position of tactical advantages. All right, his hands are in his weakest point. They are not chambered up in anything else like that. So from here, as I am talking is when I start taking my equipment out to disguise, obviously, the sound. Then when I come right in here, push, pull, push, pull. That's simple. All right, now it's not always bad to use the wall. Let's talk about using the wall to our advantage. It's just modifying his skeletal position to make sure that it'll obviously take him two moves to how many of yours? One. Therefore, obviously, your counter response time will be faster because he needs more motions. All right, Jeff, do him a favor. Up against the wall. All right. Now, what we're going to do is, Jeff, put your chest up against the wall. All right. Spread your feet a little bit more than that, please, for me. All right. Hands behind your back, thumbs in the air. Do me a favor. I want that chin in the wall. Now, Jeff, with that chin on the wall, just his head, does that make it a, a big difference? Absolutely, my whole spine is out of position. I cannot reconfigure to fight you. All right, so his spine is out of line. Remember, we don't want his body, his shoulders, to be parallel or up above his hips. That's fighting capabilities. Anytime they're behind the hips or in front of the hips, all right? Primarily, anytime the shoulders go behind the hips is an advantage for us. Now, when we're going to cuff in this position, everything still is tactics and strategies. As I am talking to him, Jeff, how did you get here? I took a car and went. All right, Jeff, do me a favor. Come on up, stand back. Here you go. There you go. All right. Now, that's how we talk. That's how using a wall to our advantage. You have to manipulate the skeleton so that their counter manipulations is very limited, or they have to at least move to get up to counter counter. Does that make sense? Good. Thank you again for joining us. I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon with my partner, Sergeant Jeff Anderson. We'll see you next time on Strategies and Tactics. Stay safe.